Hey folks, uh, welcome to Hoboken Talks. It's our Hoboken Talk Show broadcast live from the Hoboken Historical Museum. Uh, you're probably tuning in live on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter. And we're so glad to bring you another program. Uh, generally, we're talking with a Hoboken personality. My name's Bob Foster. I'm the director here at the Hoboken Historical Museum. I'm so happy to be hosting tonight. And uh, tonight we're talking with Bob Dreshoff, who was a mover and show, a mover and shaker in Hoboken. Welcome, Bob. Thank Say you, hello. Bob. Nice Thanks. to be here. Yes, we're the two Bobs tonight. We yeah. kind of joke about that, and uh, we uh, we're just sort of starting off. We'll maybe make a comment about this picture, uh, our background, which people are seeing. Uh, can you give put this in context a little bit? What we're looking at. That was a picture taken by our partners at Port Authority back around 1999 when we just finished uh, the renovation of PRA. And uh, that was the first uh, major project finished at the South Waterfront. Uh, and you can see how different everything is he there as compared to today with the uh, office buildings, the W Hotel and the residential buildings all up and, and, and working. Sure. And also uh, Pier C is kind of uh, submerged there. The, yeah, the, the original, original Pier C, which was collapsed after the many a storm. And right behind it, that little patch of green is uh, Sinatra Park, right? which was originally planned to be called the North Park. Uh, and uh, Mayor Russo had the idea at the time of uh, honoring Frank Sinatra shortly after his death. And his uh, we were fortunate enough to have his two daughters, Nancy and... Uh, uh, the other uh, group, Tina, Tina, yes, come up and actually do the dedication of the park with the mayor, and it was really a very exciting day. We had thousands of people from uh, Hoboken come up to meet the uh, Sinatras, and they were very nice and courteous and said hello to everybody that day. Right, right, yeah. Frank dies in '98, so yeah. he was not able, um, and so. Uh, just sort of refresh our memory, your kind of years in public service. Uh, you worked for the city of Hoboken starting when? Starting in uh, 78 or 79. And uh, I was appointed the uh, head of the welfare department. And uh, at that time, Hoboken was still a pretty rough and gritty town. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, lot of people on welfare, some legitimately, many not legitimately. And uh, I had been appointed by Mayor Capiello to come in as a, as a, a, a new uh, voice to really look at everything and clean up the system. And uh, I didn't think I'd stick around for a very long time, but I got to like the work I did. I liked working with Steve Capiello. I liked working with our business administrator at the time, Eddie Chuse, right. who was really uh, the mover behind not only the city at the time, but the Elks Club, which has become such an institution in town because of Eddie. Sure. There's and, a beautiful and, plaque in the Elks Club. I've that's seen kind that. of a relief and yeah. it's, it's uh, yeah. kind of emotional. Actually. And so I wound up staying with the city for 26 years, five administrations. And uh, I'm very proud of the work we accomplished. And as I said, you know, when we started, Hoboken was a, a, a very rough town. And each of the five mayors had something to contribute in their own way to uh, see Hoboken become the great, the great little city that it is today. Right. And so you, uh, uh, you've moved out of Hoboken, you have a new mm -hmm. life in Spring Lake, yeah. and you came up today, especially for this. Yeah. What are your, and you've been here over, over the years, but yeah. what's your impression when you see Hoboken now and from, let's say, the Capiello years? Oh, it's, uh, I, I can't get over how bustling it is today and the number of young people out on the streets. Uh, uh, you know, in those days, I used to walk uh, from my home on 13th and Garden to City Hall every day. And I know almost everybody on the street <laughs> walking over tonight. I, I don't know Seoul anymore. Right. It's right. all new folks. But hey, thank God they're here. They're making the, the people that have come into town over the years have made Hoboken the success it is today. Sure. So you feel a vibrancy and oh, you know. it's absolutely, it's a very moving city, right? It really is. Right. It it seems if you can afford to live here, it's you know a great place. <laughs> you know, it's it's when you think back on everything that's happened, 
politically. There were many political battles over development, over the waterfront and everything, but it's sort of like rereading Voltaire's Candide. If we had not fought, if we had not suffered and struggled, we wouldn't be sitting here today in one of the greatest little cities in the world, a place that everyone wants to come to. It seems that way. I mean, I feel lucky to live here now. Yeah. And I sort of, sometimes I'll tell people, you know, this could be the best time for Hoboken right yeah. now. And I think that's why, you know, the work you did at the museum over the years and all your members, it's, it's really important because when you speak to some of the young people today, they automatically assume Hoboken was always this great little place. They don't really know its history, even going back to the early 1900s when it was uh, packed during World War One, and there there were ninety seven thousand people right. in town at that time. Yeah, people struggling. don't, you know, according yeah. to the census. But yeah. when we tell people some of those facts, they don't actually believe it. Yeah, I know it. I yeah. can see it in their eyes. And it was a particularly very tough town during the Depression, and I don't think any scholarly report has got gotten the conditions as right as your wife's book, oh, right. Killing the Poor Master. Uh -huh. I, I think the work that Holly did was fantastic in showing what a struggle it was for so many poor people in the town at that time. Right, especially the Italian community yeah. and the yeah. entrenched uh, political machine. Yeah. Um, I, I, she'll be very uh, flattered you said that. Uh, but we do get that comment a lot from, shall we say, old timers yeah. that thank you for doing that book because yeah. the research is pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at some slides. And, you know, I don't think I knew that you grew up in Hoboken. I just assumed yeah. your, you know, I knew about your political yeah. career. And uh, when I would go up to City Hall, you're yeah. always a friendly listener and would give good advice and always had a good reputation. But I, I did not know you were born and raised here. Well, it, my mother's family, my mother's mother and father came yeah. over. Oh, we have, from, um, yeah, we have great. Anthony <laughs> Petrosino. Do you know Anthony? Yes, I do. Yeah, Anthony's uh, also very, a great fan also a very, of Holly's book. Very great yes. scholar. Too. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, but my mother's uh, mother and father came over from Italy to Hoboken in 1901. They lived in a little town called Monte San Giacomo in the province of Salerno, where so many Italians yeah. in this town came from. Sure. And which still has one of the biggest social clubs uh, around. Right. And they struggled. My, my grandmother was 16 at the time, married, pregnant on the boat on a tramp steamer wow. that took almost two weeks to get to Ellis Island. Right. And she was so sick the entire time, she told her kids that she would never take that trip again. And she never did. <laughs> right. Never went back to Italy like so many of her friends did. Sure. I don't know the amount of people who are here from Monte San Giacomo, but mm. many times I'll talk to someone and they'll say there are more people in Hoboken now yeah, yeah. from that original town. And the um, interesting thing is San Giacomo was a very, very poor town mm -hmm. at that time. And today, if you go back, so many of the people that came to America their children went back and oh, bought homes, okay. refurbished them to make it sort of a classier little village today okay. that a lot of people are attracted to. Sure, sure. Right. A Hoboken West yeah. you know, or East, I'm not sure. Um, do we have some images from the earlier time? Okay, so we may be jumping around a little bit, and these are pictures you chose. Uh, we're back on the waterfront. This was a picture my father took as he was leaving uh, for World War II for England uh, in New York Harbor. That was one of the ships parked adjacent to his boat as he went out in 43. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And this is from Hoboken. From okay. Hoboken, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. And we're there's our waterfront yeah. in its working maritime heyday, right? Yeah, you could see what a thriving waterfront we had. Sure. Uh, and even you could, if you look good at this, I don't know how well, the viewers at home can see it, but the western section of town was really, uh, many sections, undeveloped. Right, right. Yeah, we're looking west, and so we see the heights in the background. Yeah. Perspective is hard, you know, to really get a sense of that, but you're yeah. right. If you got into anything past, you know, Adams, Grand Adams, you mm -hmm. start to get into more industrial space. Industrial space, vacant lots, right. open land. Which has yeah. been developed. Yeah. But of course, it's in the flood zone, so yeah. you have other issues that yeah. come into play. Aha, yeah. uh -huh. so uh, here's the home front. Yeah. 
That's a picture of my uh, grandmother, Rose Ranga, in her kitchen on Jackson Street around 1920. And uh, she was very fortunate. She lived to be, she passed away in 1984 at the age of 98. Okay. And uh, it was a, it, it was a very loving family. We had, uh, she had a, an 11 unit tenement house on Jackson Street. And she gave rooms to each of her children as they got married. So we grew up surrounded by our aunts and uncles and cousins. And we thought it was just the greatest thing in the world. Because, uh, you know, like Sam Levinson used to say, we thought we, we had everything. We had, we had everything but money. Right. right. But that you had nothing to compare it to. Yeah. And it was yeah. uh, all that love. Yeah. yeah. And so Ranga is uh, a name that, we recognize. Mm. And so, uh, she married Aranga. Is that yeah. right? She married, my grandfather was Vincenzo Ranga. He was a bit older than her, which I guess was the tradition at the time. He might've been 10 years older. And, uh, the first floor of the house on Jackson street was a saloon right. that he had going. And, uh, he managed to thrive even during uh, prohibition. So was that on the corner? Yes. So yeah. it's kind of near the housing authority and it would be near the, they call it the Mama Johnson field. Yeah. Right. Which were, were empty lots in but those you, days. That's right. Which we'll see later on. Sure. I guess, when we get to some of this right. stuff. And the Ranga family, I think, owned it till fairly recently. Yes. Till right. about 2005 or so. Okay. Sure. Because it was the Ranga yeah. Social Club, I yeah. think, for years. Yeah. And the young Dem Dems would hang out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Aha! <laughs> that's that's what we looked like <laughs> many years ago at Number Nine School, which is the Connor School now on Second uh, and Monroe Street, right in town. And again, where are you living when you're going to Connors? This was uh, at Jeff three thirty two Jackson Street. Okay, so it wasn't too big a walk. No, no. no. So I said Definitely. we thought we had everything around us. We had the school. We had the projects fields next to us, right. the house with our friends. Sure. I mean, I, I can remember an expression that I would hear from someone like Matt Serial, which was, uh, if you can't find it in Hoboken, you're yeah. not looking hard enough. Yeah. But it's that 1950s you know, yeah. generation, yeah. I would say. Oh, and and the, the picture on the left now, that's my grandmother and grandfather, Rose and Vincenzo Ranga. Right. And the one on the right is my mother's confirmation yes picture, which had to be around 33 or 34 right i don't know who her godmother was there or her sponsor right i don't know and it says pap studio which was on first street yeah. and we just met someone walked in uh with her family in her 90s yeah. and she was a pap yeah. and she used to go to that studio and help her father photograph yeah, yeah. and it, you know it was pretty amazing now my grandfather was pretty astute politically, I think sometimes, because, you know, there was in those days in the twenties and thirties, it was tensions between the, the Irish politicians that controlled city hall and the Italians that were mostly located in the fourth ward. But every one of my mother's brothers and sisters all had Irish godfathers. Really? In fact, my mother's godfather was, uh, Lieutenant, uh, Tommy Garrick, who I who? believe is on the cover of your wife's book. Right. That's right. That's now, right. if you remember, too, Tommy's brother, Frank Garrick, was Frank Sinatra's godfather. I was, uh, that's the name that clicked in my head, too. And uh, Frank was a Frank was a very nice guy. Lived to be lived to an old age. And there was still times he lived in Fox Hill Garden on 13th Street. And there were times when Frank Sinatra would sneak into town at night and go up and spend some time with his godfather. Right. I Kept heard that story all, the, all yeah. these years. So I don't think, you know, I knew the story about Frankie Garrick and mm. Frank Sinatra and the naming, because he's yeah. sort of named after that Frank as opposed to Marty. Yeah. Uh, but I never really thought about it in terms of a way to, shall we say, Italian families to sort of respect the power base yeah. of Irish politicians. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Pretty interesting. And it worked out. And I think that's how he survived with his saloon business through prohibition. Right. We have a question from Adrian. She says, what's the cross street of your grandmother's home on Jackson? 
that house was right on the corner. It was the address was 330, 332 Jackson Street, which is on the intersection of 4th and Jackson. Right. And so I, maybe Adrian lives nearby. Mm. She, you know, as you know, there's building all throughout yeah. Hoboken and yeah. you would never expect there. Yeah. Uh, Anthony is saying beautiful picture of your grandmother, wonderful family history and a long history of dedication to Hoboken. Uh, and thanks us for doing these projects. Yeah. And a little more about McFeely, but we, 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 we know he was the Irish politician. He's the mayor of Hoboken, 1930 to 1947. Mm -hmm. uh, before McFeely, it's Mayor Griffin, I yep. believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, McFeely was fourth ward. That was his yeah, domain. Yeah, I didn't know that until yeah. you told me that. Yeah, yeah. he used to, uh, yep, <laughs> for and, sure. And the interesting thing uh, about Mayor McFeely, one of his great, great, granddaughters is a doctor in Spring Lake and one of my neighbors and friends. Really? Wow. And I couldn't believe the connection. Sure. Um, I'm not sure if there, yeah, maybe no direct descendants right now with yeah. that name, but yeah. they oh, do. Sorry, do... Not, not, not great grand uh, daughter, grand niece. 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 Okay. Yeah. And he never uh, married, didn't he? Uh, no, that's no. correct. Yeah. He loved his horses yeah. he, and he had some sisters, yeah. you know, that yeah. probably married. Yeah. And uh, so McFeely, you know, that name still comes up, obviously. Yeah. And at the same time, you have Mayor Haig in Jersey City. Yeah. And some, sometimes people would sarcastically refer to McFeely as Little Haig, mm. just because Hoboken being so much smaller. Yeah. But yeah. they're signed sort of the same era. Uh, oh, listen, Adrian's saying, thank you. I live in Spring Lake, but family is at 132 Second and Jackson you can, now. You can look me up, Adrian. I'm on Sussex Avenue. Okay. Uh, so a lot of uh, cross, cross yeah. connections there. Yeah. As they say, no degrees of separation. Yeah. And Hoboken is the connector. Um, I love these little metal frames. I know it went into a photo studio yeah. or... You know, or an arcade, you could take mm. like a photo booth shot yeah. and get these little frames. But who are they? That's uh, my mother and my father. Right. Who Tell actually who met at after the war? They were both working at the Kerfel and Essa factory. Okay. On uh, Second and Jefferson Street or so, and uh, they met there. And I thought she told me at one time she said that these were the ID badges they used to oh, carry with them. Oh, you're right. Them, you're right. I miss carry with them in, in sure. K&E, but they probably right. got them on some store in Washington. Street. Right. Probably people's photo <laughs> yeah. of the day. Yeah. But you're right. Um, yeah. And a lot of times it would have a symbol for whatever company it was. So yeah. that's what threw me. Yeah. K&E was Keuffel and Esser, and yeah. they were the manufacturers of uh, surveying equipment, surveying. measuring equipment. Rifle and, scopes, all types. Yeah. Of, right. All types of uh, accessories like that. And yeah. both both of those buildings still exist. One is Grand Adams, yeah. and then Clock Tower Apartments, Clock Towers, yeah. yeah, which was considered one of the first renovated industrial buildings in yeah. the country. Yeah. On there, that is cool. Um, and the Anthony is telling us my grandfather worked for McFeely Public Works Sanitation. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone worked if you if you did if you uh, paid allegiance in a yeah. sense. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And what did the, the next picture is so interesting. What did every poor Italian family do in the summer? The big trip for a day or for a weekend was to go to Kingsburg, New Jersey. Right, right. Yeah, and, let's get out of here. That, that, was, that was the big trip. And that's uh, several of my aunts on the left and my mother on the right. Sure. I think there were boats that left here that went down yes, there. Yes, that's how they, they took right. a ferry boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, many I think it was called the Keensburg, so you knew where yeah, you were going. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you could drive there, too. And that's another shot of uh, Kingsburg with my grandmother in the middle. Right. And my aunts. And I believe around. Frank Sinatra met uh, his first wife, Nancy Barbado, Nancy. Jersey City girl, yeah. uh, down in Kingsburg. Oh, that's an interesting yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. And let's see. Devil is saying, hi, Grandpa, it's Philip. Lots oh, of love. Hi, Philip, my uh, grandson. Oh, very <laughs> cool. Very cool. Very cool. How old is he? He is Around. 12. 12, okay. He's going to be Nathan. 13. Right. He probably understands yeah. how to connect on all this better than we do. Yeah. <laughs> and this is another shot. This is an interesting shot of my mother and her friends at K&E. They used to take 
breaks on the roof of the building. They were permitted to go up there and smoke or just talk and do whatever they wanted. And that's what uh, the building in old in the old clock towers. You can like see, you, yeah, that in is those days. Sure, yeah. I mean, that building's a square block, so yeah. they could just be on another section. Yeah, I can't tell you how many photos are taken on the roofs yeah. of buildings yeah. just to get height and kind of a different background yeah. on there. And, and do you know what your parents did there at Caney? No, no, okay. I don't know. But uh, this was my mother was probably twenty one or twenty two there, right? And that's probably the age of most of the other women in that group. Uh-huh, so, sure, sure. Yeah. It looks yeah. like uh, uh, a happy group. But, but the clothes are from another era. Well, sure, yeah. sure. They're, they're at work. You yeah. wear work yeah. clothes. Yeah. So no. on there. We, there's some Different other pictures styles. of yeah. your mother that we'll see where yeah. she's definitely uh, yeah. showing off the clothes, right? Yeah. The, the woman on the right is Anita Heinbrunn. Yes, oh. one of my mother's best friends. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So Rand, who is producing the show, and thank yeah. you, Rand Hoppe, just mentioned the woman on the right is Anita Heinbrook, who glass. we have, uh, she was uh, worked at Caney. Yeah. We just learned recently she was deaf and could read lips really oh, well, and a lot that. of people didn't even know no. she was deaf. Uh, Lived on Garden Street, yes, probably across on my, the street. On my old block. Yeah. yeah. And she was in charge of the K&E Photo Club, which was oh, very active. Yeah. And she photographed a lot of Hoboken in yeah. the 1960s, yeah. late 50s, 60s, when and a lot of, of things were changing. And a lot uh, of color photographs, too. That's she right. Produced. Yeah. She used to have little slideshows, yeah. uh, soirees in yeah. her apartment. Yeah. And we, I, yeah, she donated all her images mm -hmm. to us. So we're so happy. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rand, for noticing yeah. that. I don't think I recognized her. And maybe she had a tripod and a self timer and took that picture. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised. And, so and, and this is an impressive photo. Impressive or sad in a way because well, that's what uh, that's what Jackson Street looked like in the '30s. Right. There was a poor section of town, and you, my mother is standing on the corner of Fourth and Jackson, looking east up Fourth Street there. Right. And all those buildings behind her on Monroe Street is still there. And right, the, the backs of them. Yeah, yeah, they're all still up. Sure. And uh, that corner that's empty behind her was where uh, the original Romano's uh, banquet hall was. Okay, I I've heard Romano, of it. No, Romano's, I don't remember it. Which then became a Chinese restaurant. Right. Uh, and then uh, now it's a bunch of variety stores or a grocery store. I think they're down now too. Are they? <laughs> yeah, that would have been That's Big Banner and Big they're, Banner. They're, they're building right. there now yeah. and it probably is done. Uh but you just look at the general condition of the streets and everything. They the town never cared for anything. And we there. are talking and, during the depression and yeah. wood frame houses, if yeah. they weren't, you know, if you didn't put money into them, they're yeah. almost gonna fall down. So I the mean, brick ones in the background yeah. are still here. Yeah. No, but I mean, even the condition of the streets, how terrible. They yeah, were. You saw, sure. You saw it was litter everywhere. But the contrast between yeah. your mom with her expression <laughs> and her clothing <laughs> yeah. is just makes a great photo of contrast. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, her, you know, enthusiasm. She's not letting the environment get her down. Oh, no, no. no. You know? They loved it. They loved yeah. being down there. And this is a day off from k &E. In fact, you know that the, the reason that house is still there today is in the early 50s when the federal government came in and acquired all the land for the projects they wanted my grandmother's house and she was maybe early 70s at the time and she said no i bought this house with my f husband and i intend to die in this house and she took the federal government to court and wow. and, and got them to carve out that section of the land development tract right to retain her house there right and that's how that, that was the only private house now that exists from uh almost third Fourth, third uh, and third in jackson to uh seventh right on that Sixth side on the west side yeah. you're right yeah like really someone like uh marie tataro her yeah. family lived across the street a few yeah. blocks up yeah yeah and uh she's recently passed sadly but yeah. she showed me her house yeah and where she grew up and uh, yeah. we talk about the billy goats across yeah. the street yeah. So, yeah. which you may be talking about too yeah yeah and that's the the picture on the left is the reverse uh, now my mother is standing on fourth and jackson we're looking west 
towards the Palisades. And the uh, building behind her was a blacksmith shop. Wow. And behind that was a goat farm. Right. Where, uh, and, and I remember my aunts telling me that when the kids were, they were all very small, uh, goat milk was cheaper than cow's milk. Right. And so for many years, the kids were raised on goat's milk and they right. cooked with goat's milk. Wow. So you were raised on goat's milk. <laughs> so it must be okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, the picture on the right is, is a reverse again, looking back north up 4th Street, a wider shot of uh, that area down there. Right. This is before, as stated, 41, before yeah. World War II. Yeah. And your dad did go fight in World in War 43. II. Yeah, 43. Yeah, 43. Right. Did he ever talk much about that? Yeah, yeah. He wanted, he he was stationed in England for over two years, and he traveled a lot on his furloughs. He went uh, to Scotland. He went up to Edinburgh. He went down to London and, and uh, Dover, a lot of the southern coastal towns. And he always wanted to go back when he had money and he was retired. But unfortunately, he passed away when he was 44 from a heart condition wow. mm -hmm. and he never made it back. So I've been going through his mementos recently of some of the places he sure. had gone to in case I want to go back with my right. wife in a few years. Sure. That'd be great. A lot um, of them are still standing. Right. I often meet people from Hoboken whose family or they served in World War II. Fortunately, most of them did not see that much action. Yeah. And what they took away with, I was a little kid from Hoboken. Yeah. I didn't even go into New York City, yeah. but I traveled on furloughs to yeah. Dover, and yeah. it was like their way to see the world, yeah. which yeah. they never it. would have done. Yeah. 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 And so we're on the, are, yeah, where a, are we? That's, on, a, that's a picture on what today would be fourth and Marshall Drive. Oh, okay. There was nothing back there. And for right. some reason, the family tended to take pictures a bit. Right. And that's my mother's whole family, her brothers and sisters. Sure. One sister is missing right. from that. Here is from uh, Eric Kramer. There's a nice testimony to old Hoboken. They stayed, which held Hoboken in the long run. So kind of alluding to your yeah. public service. Thank you, Eric. Sure. It's very nice. And that was at the inside. That was the dining room uh, on Jackson Street. And it was probably during the war because I see she's got pictures of her right. sons in uniform back there. And your dad's in that picture? Or no, no. no. He, he didn't meet my mother till uh, 46 or 47. Okay. And they were married in 48. Sure. But uh, and... the, the gentleman on the right is my Uncle Marty Ranga. Okay. Who, uh, between he, he and Louis Francone, were for 36 years were the only council people who ever represented the fourth ward. Right, right. Wasn't there Mrs. Francone too? Yes, <laughs> Mrs. Francone. <laughs> then uh, Mr. Amato, Mrs. Amato. Right. <laughs> Before we got to Those Ruben were Ramos. some crazy yeah. elections. <laughs> I can remember yeah. those in the yeah. early mid 80s yeah. uh, into the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, cool. Uh, well, yeah. And that's uh, that picture is of my mother's wedding day, the family outside of St. Francis Church. Okay. Rand was uh, hypothesizing where this was, and you yeah. were right. Yeah. yeah. Some flowery dresses. In those and days. those hats. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. And uh, oh, this is uh, <laughs> that is my mother, probably 10 years old, 32 or 33. That was the annual May Day parade down 4th Street. Tell me about that. But, what do you know about it? It was just as uh, it was a big event for the Italian families down in the fourth ward. And they would uh, select a May queen and a May king and they parade around the neighborhood. Sure. And they always had those outfits, yeah. Uh, yeah. which I believe they got from United Decorating at 421 uh, Washington. Because yeah. we, we yeah. were uh, around when that you know, business mm. was dissolved with the yeah. Kirschgesners and there were tons of outfits wow. just like this. Yeah. And I believe and Jimmy Roselli, the singer, was one year was the king. Oh, okay. We have a picture in our collection yeah. of Jimmy. I, yeah. I and, wish I knew who the kid was here, the boy. Right. But I don't. She didn't, yeah. She didn't. Sure. She remembered him, but I never wrote it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And that's, that's the house in the mid-60s, I would say. 
Right. So you could drive by this corner right now mm -hmm. and kind of recognize that house. Yeah. There's right. A, I think a, maybe it's aluminum there's, siding there's now. Some cheap, but cheap green aluminum siding yes, on it. But definitely. everything else is almost exactly the same. Right. The, the garage across the done. street is gone. Yeah. But that was kind of a substantial building on yeah. the block. Yeah. I, yeah. And they bought that around. They got here in 1901. They bought that around 1908, 1909. Right. Yeah, and it was in the family until they sold it just before my mother passed away, in two thousand and three or two thousand and four. Right, they held it. And actually, in that pic, just go back to that picture one more time. There's one amazing old business. I think it's still there, where it's uh, you can buy live poultry. Oh yes, around yeah. the corner. My my uncle bo uh, built a. Uh, sewing shop down there that he had for years and when they sold everything he sold that that was the original site of the big banner store oh big really banner. and when they moved across the street they sold that to a live poultry company which unfortunately i'm a vegetarian and it, it saddens me to go buy that and see what's going on in there now so, yeah. um okay yeah. so <laughs> and, the, and the place on the corner on the left was cooper tires Oh, right. And where everybody downtown and went to buy tires years ago. You sure. You car in that garage and they changed them and set you all up. Right. And we're looking this at is, the small print there. Um, this, it's the Santa Fabronia Club. Yeah. Or, Santa Fabronia is a little church that still exists on fifth street between Monroe and Madison. And it, when you look at the size of this crowd, it shows you the following, even that small church had. The Italians had so many social clubs in those days, and they were all packed with people whenever they had an event. Uh, today, you couldn't get a crowd like that anywhere in there. Right. And the women in the uh, middle row in the front are uh, some of my aunts and their friends. You couldn't get that many people into the Santa Fabronia church. No, no. You I don't couldn't. think but so. That's, that's the supporters you had. Or... Right. Are we in the Union yeah. Club? I'm having. No, this no. was somewhere else, which okay. I'm not sure of. Yeah, interesting. So they might have gone into New York because it would be, Could be what hall would be here? The yeah. Romano uh, Catering Club? Yeah, or no, and that's, that's Union not Club. Yeah. 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 That's a pretty amazing photo. And this is the Union Club. Yes. And this was the uh, Columbus Day uh, dinner up there that Un the Hoboken Unico Club sponsored. Right, that was the Italian uh, yeah. social and, and organization. Again, it shows you the, uh, the volume of people that the Italian clubs could generate for an event, and they, they all thrived. And uh, the middle table, uh, the first gentleman you see on the right with the black bow tie is Frank Verasco, who used to own General Lumber company in town oh the Verasco family right. yeah right. and on the left at the table the round table uh the first gentleman in the back that's uh tommy gallo who was the assemblyman at the time right or no he might have been a councilman at the time mm -hmm. he went to the assembly later on but they used to get all the politicians came down to their events in those days right and that was 55 so the year on the waterfront uh, got the Academy Awards, oh, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and that that is the predecessor to the Ranga Club. When my grandfather died and they shut down the tavern, uh, my uncle uh, did put made a sewing shop out of uh, the storefront until he built the other place around the corner. And uh, those are just some of my aunt, my mother, my aunts, and cousins posing there in front. And you still don't we, really we see We have much never activity. seen so many pictures of the West Side. So yeah. it's so great to see. Oh, these, I, I didn't you know. think I'd have enough for you. Right. No, you got. And you still I mean, see there's really no development back right, there. Right. Right. At all. That was in. That was. When my uncle got elected, the gentleman in the white shirt and tie, when he got elected to the council, they made that then a social club, a civic club. And they put a bar in the back and then a big ballroom out front. And that's the bar in the back on a Saturday night. That was a big social uh, stop. Sure. 
yeah. to go down there and have a drink with you. Bars friends. and politics, yeah. uh, Irish, Italian, real yeah. traditions. Yeah. Real traditions. The, gen the gentleman on the right at the back wall is Charlie Gianni, who was a Hoboken. My uncle, who was a Hoboken cop at the time. I don't know that name. But yeah. I mean, and uh, this would be your uncle, you said? It's my right. mother's oldest brother. Right, yeah. right. And some family resemblance. You think so? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's another shot of the bar with uh, my father on the left, uh, Louis Aligo in the middle. I don't know if you know the Aligos. They I don't know that name. Okay. And uh, I forget the gentleman on the right. Right. The Aligos were all firemen for a while. Okay. And this was the year, I think, the projects first opened. That's the only time you saw development behind Jackson Street. And that really led to the cleanup of Jackson Street. On the left side, you can see there are no buildings yet. Right. But that was the initial construction that went on down there. I don't know the history of Housing Authority that well, but we're after World War II yeah. and late 40s. Early 50s. Early 50s. Yeah. There is a plaque on the building and when mm -hmm. I, I go in there. Yeah. And uh, you can see the Palisades in the background. Yeah. That might be like, I don't know, maybe we're seeing houses or the concert bandstand up there in the background. Yeah, that is uh, the park in Jersey City. Uh, right, what is up that? in the Heights. Yeah, the Heights Off park. of Ogden. But yeah. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. spacing. Riverview Park, something Riverview, like that. Riverview Park. Yeah, which yeah. would be apt. Yeah. But now Riverview Park is being blocked by new buildings mm -hmm. being built up yeah. uh, in Hoboken, actually. So what was when the Housing Authority is built, you're, uh, it's before you're born, right? A little uh, bit? Yeah. And uh, because you'll see a picture of me as an infant uh, during construction here. Right. Yeah. That's when <laughs> things were going on. Right. And, right. We, and we loved being next to the housing authority because we had that big field to play in, all the kids on the block. And the, the custodial staff, the janitors that worked there were very strict in those days. And, and, you know, between the buildings were all little parks or playground areas. And if you didn't live there, you were chased out. Okay. So they were very strict about how they maintained those buildings and everything. Well, we were just happy to have the ball field next to us. Right. And it was all new. Yeah. And yeah. so a lot of Hoboken's housing at that time were those old wood frame buildings. Yeah. They're not maintained. Oh, yeah. They're crumbling. Like yeah. you saw these, the picture were, of your these, mother. These were beautiful three room apartments. Every room had a door on it, which was unheard of in those days. <laughs> right, as opposed, railroad as opposed to railroad <laughs> yeah. uh, apartment yeah. and indoor plumbing yeah. and not the yeah. bathtub in the kitchen yeah. and those type of situations. Yeah. And I'm going to say that a lot of the families that first moved into the housing authority were Italian families yeah. who lived, let's say, on Madison or Monroe. Houses are falling down yeah. and they moved there and were, you know, yeah, they thought they, they hit the lottery because yeah, it was all yeah, brand I, new. I would go home and beg my mother and father, like, <laughs> can't we move there? I used to see my friends, the apartments they had, how right. beautiful they were. Sure, sure. It's interesting. Interesting. Oh, ah. this, this is something very dear to your heart. Yes. That Tell, we talked about. Yeah, like but a, let's hear your take on it. Well, uh, now this is from, this picture is from your archives. It is, it is. This is the Marty O'Brien Association, which was Frank Sinatra's mother's father's bar on 4th and Jefferson Street. Diagonal to Delfino's restaurant here in Hoboken, I believe. Delfino. Do you? My favorite Italian oh, restaurant. Oh, it wasn't Fourth and Jefferson. It is. That's oh, where Fourth, Delfino's. Delfino's is. is yeah, it's, it's more on the west side. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, my grandfather was friends with Marty O'Brien, and they hung out in each other's places. And if we can go to the next slide, um, you'll see. No, I'm sorry. Do we we may have changed the order there slightly. There it is. Yeah. That's a photo. That's it. I thought it was inside my grandfather's bar. It was inside Marty's bar. And my grandfather is the gentleman with the tie on the right. And if you notice in the photo, there's one little boy sitting on the steps. And that's Frank Sinatra. And the two people in front of him are his mother and father, Marty and Dolly O'Brien. Right. 
it's one of Marty the and, and Dolly Sinatra. I mean, I guess we see baby pictures of Frank, but mm -hmm. we don't see that many pictures of him in this era. Yeah. yeah. And his parents are much younger too. Yeah. And uh, definitely take it inside a bar. Yeah. That's a classic tavern table with yeah. the two circles and yeah. you put your stuff on the lower level. I just love this photo. And uh, my grandfather died in 1936. So I think this had to be the late twenties or the very early thirties. And I don't understand why a lot of folks in this picture are holding dogs. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, it's interesting. Right. And this, photo came to me courtesy of my cousin Matteo Ronda, who's down in Florida. Uh -huh. uh, he found it in his uh, family stuff going through right. that one. We were so happy to me. see this. We uh, yeah. we did a little Facebooking with this picture yeah. and yeah. got a lot of likes. I hope you for get sure. some good use out of it. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman second from our right with mm -hmm. the straw hat yeah. was a McFeely or was really connected with yeah. uh, Bernard McFeely. He's in all the, when they did all the exposés, like in Life Magazine yeah. about, you know, McFeely and patronage, yeah. he's in all you the photos. That face. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll never forget that face. Yeah. And then the contrast of this big guy with this little <laughs> chihuahua type dog, yeah. it's just, and it, you know, he's holding it so lovingly, it's, yeah. it's perfect. And I don't know why there's so many dogs. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, and but it's great to have an early picture of yeah. Frank. Yeah. And of course, we don't really know if this is like an inside joke, like mob, yeah. M O B, yeah. does stand for Marty O'Brien. Yeah. And uh, so many people probably know the story about that M O or Marty O'Brien was the nickname for for Frank Sinatra's father. Mm. Uh, and he was spent early years sparring, fighting, mm. and it was considered more appropriate to have an Irish name. Mm. He's Italian. Yeah. And uh, to have an Irish name because people respected Irish fighters more than oh, Italians. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, but of course, mob, it yeah. has another connotation, yeah. Yeah. which I'm not sure when that, you know, when we talk about the mm -hmm. mob, when that happens, it's probably thirties though. Yeah. And then we see it on in the banner here. And then yeah. we see it stenciled, you know, on the side of the yeah. social club. Yeah. I just regret. I never had looked at these earlier enough to talk to some of my aunts about them and get more information out of them. Right. But, uh, but you got the yeah. photos yeah. and you know, yeah. uh, but we all say that, you yeah. know, it, time is precious yeah. and try to get the information while you can. And back to that back one. To so bar. that is, that's your uncle? Uncle or? Marty Ronga. Okay, right. Uh, the oldest of the family and the uh, the councilman from the fourth ward. And again, just another wide shot of uh, sure. Jackson, fourth street between Jackson and the mountains. Right, the mountains. The expression for people who lived in the mountains were the, the hillies. The hillies. They would call them the hillies. Yeah. And that's, that's, my cousins and the kids, some of the kids we grew up with on Jackson Street, the, the little dope with his mouth open and the black shirt in front is me. Uh-huh. <laughs> and do you, what type of kid activities would you do back oh, then? Do you we, remember? We played ball all day long. And you had but, the field right by yeah, the housing authority. Because you had basketball courts there. You, you could play football on that field. You could play baseball on that field. We did everything. Right. And Sunday dinners at grandma's house yeah, or? Yeah, yeah. So you'd run in from the ball field and have. And, and you know, I was such a fussy, fussy eater. <laughs> All the things she made, I, I didn't like. Right. And, and today I'll pay $20 for a polenta appetizer in a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> I could have it all. You can all hear her voice, ends. right? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Oh, and this, is, this is a great photo. This is the Grand Hotel where, uh, which... Where was that ball? Was that second or third in Hudson Street? Um, it's in the vicinity. I'm going to yeah. say third, but I could yeah. be wrong. And that's where my mother and father had their wedding reception. And uh, we have the bill from that reception. There it is, July 3rd, 1948. They had 50 people for dinner with a keg of beer for $169. Sign me on. <laughs> wow. And that's God. 48. It's after the war. Yeah. And who's saving this stuff? My mother did. Your mother did. Yeah. Wow. My wow. father saved all his wartime stuff. My mother saved everything else that, uh -huh. that we see here. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
And uh, Eric is back on it. It's amazing about Frank Sinatra. So thank you so much for growing up in Hoboken. This gives me such joy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many new residents. I'm going to assume that Eric is somewhat a new resident, mm -hmm. but it's so great. Maybe he's not, but uh, but it's so great to meet people or see people meet here in the museum yeah. of, let's say, an old timer and someone who's you know wasn't born here yeah. and hear the exchange. Yeah. We have many volunteers. Uh, a shout out to uh, uh, Donna Trulio and Barbara Rothman. Yeah. Uh, Vicky, Gina Casparo. And oh, when Vicky. someone comes yeah. in, uh, we say there's no degrees of separation. Yeah. They either went to high school, you know, with them, but, or, you know, with some relative, but they are so giving to share their knowledge of Hoboken mm. and so proud to be from Hoboken. Yeah. Ah, this is close to home. Yeah. Yeah, I think, is this from your archive also? It could be. It could have been yeah. like National Archives recording the, the site before the old, they tore down yeah, buildings. The old and Bethlehem so on. shipyards, where yeah. the site of the uh, shipyard is today. Right where we're where, sitting. Yeah, yeah, practically. Uh, in the background is the side of uh, Maxwell, Maxwell Coffee. Yeah. And then these two buildings we're seeing, I think, was a plate shop and a carpenter yeah. shop, and were torn down to make way for the shipyard development. That's why I say it's a remarkable how far we've come in so short a time, really, because if you showed these pictures to some of the newer residents coming into town today, would they have ever thought of about even renting or buying in Hoboken? Right. And, uh, you know, the pioneers who did come in in the 80s, like Don Singleton and his family, I mean, they, they really made a difference. Right. And that, you know, someone who's raised here, sometimes it's hard to say that, yeah. but it's you're yeah. giving credit where credit is due. Yeah. And many times we'll meet a retired shipyard worker who yeah. I think the shipyard closes, let's say, 88, and then it's kind of abandoned property. Yeah. But they'll come back here and they'll go, I can't believe this is the place I worked. Yeah. They're just like, feel like they're Rip Van Winkle or something. Yeah. Cool. And we got Paul Nishampin. Paul and lives down a lot Paul's in Bradley in Beach, Bradley right? Bradley Beach, and I read about Paul all the time doing work for the Bradley Beach Historical Society. Excellent. And you're yeah. involved very heavily. The Spring Lake Historical Society. Okay, so yeah. you guys are kindred uh, Yeah, I have uh, to run into I've people. got to make it an appointment to run into him. Okay, okay. Um, and uh, you've lived various places in Hoboken. Yeah. Uh, and this is obviously a vintage photo, 1890s-ish. Yeah. And what block are we? I mean, there's a this caption. Is, but... This is uh, Garden Street between uh, 12th and 13th. And uh, we lived at 1238 Garden Street for many years. And uh, we, we knew from the uh, title work and the deeds that our house was built in 1890. Right. And uh, if you look just past the last tree on the right, that's our house there under construction. And you see it under construction. And, and, yeah, yeah, and you can imagine what uh, what the area was like in those days. I mean, developers would come in and just take an empty tract and put up these row of brownstones that uh, right. just turned out to be absolutely beautiful. So it sort of shows on the west side of street of yeah. Garden, there's, there's yeah. an empty lot. Yeah, because uh, you wouldn't be able to have this view, you know, because yeah. the 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 west side would block it. Yeah, uh, it happens to be one of my favorite blocks in Hoboken. Yeah, and uh, people are great who live there now. Mm. Uh, many of them uh, will put their homes on the house tour. A lot of great families and pretty continuous in terms of preservation. Mm. They're very few yeah. brick faced. Uh, People have, you know, taken off stucco that yeah. was a kind of a 60s mm. thing and yeah. gone back to the original yeah. materials. And I have to say, you know, I, I spent a lot of years on Jackson Street, but moving up to Garden Street, we spent many years up there. It was really a very great social uh, street. Uh, the, the families were all very friendly and welcoming, and it was you, they made you just feel right at home coming, mm -hmm. coming up there. And we used to look forward to block parties every once in a while and, right. and events. And it was, it was really, really very nice. Mm -hmm. um, we, we actually did it this year, but it's one of our favorite blocks to do holiday caroling. Uh, oh, yes, because yes. you can yes. sing from across the street and still connect with the person. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. cool. And, uh, 
Okay, That's, we're back to the start, yeah. right? This uh, you talked about coming on with uh, Mayor Capiello, and yeah, and uh, that was this was probably eighty one or eighty two. Uh, you know that the, the welfare office had many locations, right? And that was the old pool room on Adams Street, which uh, was abandoned, and the city took over, foreclosed on. And they made that our office, which was, you know. Were the tables uh, still there? No, oh, everything oh, was Too gone. bad, too bad. And uh, the city carpenters did a quick job of putting up counters and windows and everything else. Right. And uh, that was one of the places we bounced to with our with our staff. Right, right. And right next to it was the Hoboken Comprehensive Employment and Training Act offices, the gray building, which was the old uh Adams Lane's bowling. Okay, so we're talking like the little mini mall where yes. the Dunkin' Donuts is, yeah. and you can still see the arch of the bowling yeah. alley in the background. Yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, that, okay, I know exactly where that is. Yeah, and we're back to our background photo. Yeah, and uh, you know that that was the start of the waterfront development, yeah. right? Yeah. So no W Hotel yet. Yeah. Uh, this was 1999. Right. We opened uh, Pier A in September of that year, and uh, we opened up uh, Sinatra Park a year earlier. Right. And then uh, we went on to, uh, first the residential building went up that Applied did, mm -hmm. then the Wiley building, and then lastly was the W Hotel. Right. We got a great question from Richie. He stole one of my questions. Oh. Which development project are you most proud of? Oh, well... Good question, Rich. Uh, probably it's. I think that the, the the two projects that I had the most influence on were the South Waterfront, and then the Northwest Redevelopment Area, where the Shoprite is today. Because, you know, for years, uh, that Northwest area where all the old abandoned factories were, uh, we created business incubators to try and bring, bring business back into that and revive the commercial industry in Hoboken. But we lost out every chance we got to the southern states, which were offering uh, much lower taxes and cash incentives to come down and relocate their industries there. And so I spoke to the mayor one day, Mayor Russo, and I said, you know, the only thing we are, we're great at that nobody can beat us at is creating bedrooms for people. Let's change that commercial designation to residential and let the residential, let, let the development community build up what uh, demand is called for down there. And that's how we wound up with all that new development, all those new rental and condominium housing units along uh, the western section up there. Sure. And I guess... Uh... Light rail helped spurn some of that too. Yeah. Made it yeah. attractive. And uh, we, we actually, in our first iteration, wanted to include everything right up to the Weehawken border. But uh, Academy Bus owned so much, so much of that property at the time, we were concerned that litigation from them would uh, uh, stall this development completely or, or just knock it dead in its tracks. So we removed those sections of property above the viaduct. And today I see the mayor and council are retackling that issue. And I give them a lot of credit for what they did on that because that is the next uh, frontier of Hoboken development. And from the plans I see, I think it could be a very successful project. Right. And uh, the Southwest had similar issues too. And uh, yes. I think a, and a big chunk of that is just that they've now. agreed to sell some yeah. of that property yeah. and yeah. eventually their parks and uh, residential. Yeah. So we have a few more photos and we're on the waterfront. Castle Point Park on the development. Right. That was, a, that was a neat little project. Sure. That was a real partnership with the state on that. Right. I've got a lot of funding from the yeah, state. Yeah. And if you look at pictures, let's say, from the 70s mm -hmm. of this site, it is yeah. like falling in the water. Yeah. And you remember what was right alongside that crane in those days. Uh, the, which uh, crane? The, uh, or you uh, mean to, the, the digger? Water. Oh, yeah. Uh, next to that was Dr. Stevens, dormit floating dormitory. 
Oh, that's right. The SS Stevens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I sort of forgot exactly its placement. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had a picture of that, but I didn't have anything in my file. And just think from the SS Stevens to the dorms they're building now yeah. on campus, a yeah. uh, different thing. But we'll meet students who stayed at the SS Stevens and, you know, they'll remember it fondly. Yeah. Uh, but, and, they've, and they've got to be our age now, at least. Yeah, right? definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. There's another picture of the Wiley building going up. Oh, right, right. Time. So way before the W Hotel, Yeah. but sort of the start of that type of construction yeah. Yeah. on there. And in those days, you know, we were in, uh, I believe, 99 was still Mayor Giuliani. And he had so many business incentive programs to bring corporations to New York City that we really had a tough time competing right with them right. on that sure and if it wasn't for the partnership with the port authority that lowered our infrastructure costs here we could never have accomplished getting a a, a company like wiley sure some of the others that came over at that time right right yeah new york was really tough competition in those days right right that's true i think after september 11th you started to see mm -hmm. some more people saying hey let's get out of the city and, yeah and that that uh, was uh, yeah. kind of a, uh, a connection to mm -hmm. our member. So excellent, excellent. So we are wrapping it up. And uh, it was a lot it, of fun today, Bob. It was, it was. So we probably about, talked more now oh, than we've talked <laughs> forever. Yeah. And uh, again, our program is Hoboken Talks. Uh, if you want to spread the word that we've done this program, you can, uh, it is archived and we don't have to edit anything. I think it went pretty well. And uh, you can go to the museum's YouTube channel and you will hear the same program. Uh, next week we'll be having, uh, our guest will be Joe Lewis, a very important poet. And he'll be interviewed by another important poet, Danny Schott. And uh, following week after that, I'll be interviewing uh, restauranter Dave Carney, uh, who grew up here in Hoboken. So we have some great shows lined up. And uh, make, sure, make sure Dave brings you some sliders. When he some sliders. Over. Yeah, I'm vegetarian, too. So I don't know if he's doing veggie sliders. I'm more in the polenta family these <laughs> yeah. days. We can. I'm interested to talk to you about that, yeah. too. Um, so I want to thank Rand Hoppe, who is our engineer, keeps us on track. And then, of course, uh, you know, sometimes reflect on people who've helped the museum uh, who've made things possible and want to do a shout out to friends of Donald Shackett, who was a big donor through his estate to the museum. Uh, and then we always thank Applied Companies, who is, you know, really responsible for providing the space for the museum mm -hmm. and continues to. Yeah. Couldn't do it without them. We have a great staff. We got great people. But if you don't have a place to hang your hat, it creates problems. Yeah. And we know how hard it is to get space in Hoboken. Things are tight, but somehow, you know, we'd love to grow, but we love our space right now. And so we're going to be signing out. And uh, thank you for your comments. And we got a few visuals. I just want to let you know that you can come up to the museum, of course, see our exhibit, uh, which is great. We have an upper gallery exhibit, which are photographs by Gary Spector of the hospital workers here with our, our local hospital. They're pretty group, important group of photos. Uh, we have our postcard exhibit for Hudson County. And you're actually seeing uh, Rand and Lisa playing ping pong. We've acquired a ping pong table. And so ping pong and history seem to go pretty good. So we got balls, we got paddles, uh, and we have a great time here at the museum. We all say it's got to be fun or what's the point, and we kind of continue that tradition. So I hope to see you next week, and thank you so much for tuning in. Signing off. Bye thank, now. Thank you, Bob.